Hi, good morning. I'm back with some more crochet. I'm on a roll at the moment. Basically, we did a little bit of Christmas last week, and this time, as you've seen from the thumbnail, we're going to do a little bit of autumnal. Now, it could be autumnal, it could be Halloween, it is a pumpkin, it really any season. If you're like my daughter, you'll have them there all year because they are cute, aren't they? Pumpkins are. I don't know, they really do evoke that autumnal feel, which a lot of people really do like, and so do the shops at the moment. As I've noticed, there is a huge amount of autumnal themed things about. I know my daughter's already bought some things. I don't think I really need any more at the moment. I've not had a look yet, but I'm sure I will pick up something. But we're gonna make these little pumpkins. We're gonna actually make this one, because this one's a little bit quicker to make, but it is so easy. Well, it's barely anything to make a larger one, anything different. So it is in UK terms, don't forget that. You may need a conversion chart. I'll pop a little bit of sort of UK to US, but you may need a conversion chart anyway. Because uh, I know it has thrown a few people when I'm referring to double crochet stitches, which are here in the UK. And I know in the US they're actually single crochets, but obviously I'm going to refer to the UK terms. So we're going to make this little guy here. We're going to go top down. If you do enjoy my videos, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And we will see you in a minute. And let's get crocheting. So here we have our little pumpkins and they really, really could not, as I drop them everywhere, could not be any simpler. We're going to start with this tiny guy here and then I'll explain sort of the difference between the two for the sizing. Uh, you barely need a pattern for this, to be perfectly honest. I have used a double knit yarn, so I have my selection of colours here. I think I'm going to go with another sort of burnt orange one as a tiny one. So we'll move that one to one side because it does block the light a little bit. I need a little bit of green obviously for our leaves and the tendrils and a tiny bit of brown for the stalk but that is literally all you need it is a tiny bit I have a little bit of stuffing here so I'll pop that to one side as well now my hook that I'm using is a 3.5 millimeter hook standard hook size for this uh, you could do it the larger one if you wish because double knit yarn will take up to that up to about a four uh, but again you could use a chunky yarn you could use a really fine yarn and just choose your hook size to suit the particular yarn you're choosing now I did two different versions this was the prototype and I actually crocheted together the final bit and I didn't like that because it sort of stuck out too much so this one's stitched so there is a slight difference there in fact thinking about stitch that means I need a needle where's my needles I have my little needle tin I am rummaging through here there we go that one will do it's just a basic wool needle that's all you need so we're going to get started with this little guy and as I say I'll do him in this burnt orange and then I've got a little collection for myself then so we start obviously we need a slip stitch now for me this is unusual because I'm so used to doing amigurumi but we're not we're going to work in rows for this one couple of things you have to watch for when you are working in rows but we're going to just start with 15 chain one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so we have fifteen chain now this little guy was worked on fifteen chains this one was worked on twenty chains so that is the only difference at that point so i will explain as we go along so for our first row we're just going to do one double crochet into each of those. This is our foundation row. And if you're anything like me, you don't like foundation rows. I really don't like foundation rows. But it is just basically one double crochet in each UK double crochet, remember? Otherwise, it will make quite a difference to your uh, little pumpkin. I've dropped a stitch there and I've only just started. There we go. So we're going to just do one double crochet in each. It's a little bit annoying to start with because it curls. As you can see, it's curling, so you have to just keep flattening it out because it gets in your way otherwise. There we go. So we've just got 15 stitches. Well, actually, you've got 14 stitches because your 15th was your turning chain. So it is actually only 14 stitches, but it doesn't really have to be that strict with this i mean that's the beauty of making these you know you could sort of do 16 stitches you could do smaller i think much smaller you might struggle with this yarn i think you would have to drop maybe to a four ply yarn 
um but yes if it, you could do tiny weeny ones if you wanted so i'm just going to tighten that up there and i'm going to do one chain ready to turn now we're going to be working in just the back loop of every single double crochet from now on if you're not sure about that if you turn your work towards you you can see in fact, let me take that out a second just to explain it you can see we have a chain yes so there's this chain so if our work is facing us this way when i say back loop it's literally just picking up that back part of the stitch all the way around so you do a double crochet it makes this bit then stick out so it gives you a bit of a rib now the other sort of pitfall for rows is missing that first stitch because I've done a chain that doesn't count as anything and I need to go directly below for my first stitch if I don't I'm going to lose a stitch let me just tighten that up so that's a back loop double crochet it's the same stitch it's just that you're only going in that back part of it now you'll see I sort of as I do it I sort of tip my work forward towards me so I can see where that back loop is a little bit easier the more you do it the easier that will get it's still going to curl a little bit for these first couple of rows but after that it will sit sort of a lot flatter so this is just row one of our back loop double crochet There we go. Just got a couple more to do. So hopefully it won't curl on the next one because I do find it very irritating. Now the thing we also need to watch here is that very last stitch because it doesn't always look like a stitch. If you miss a stitch at this end and you miss a stitch at this end, your work is going to start looking like that. If you do it one side and not the other, keep an eye out for it. It could be that you are just missing that first stitch or that very last stitch. It'd be a bit easier for me to show you on the next round. Now I'm actually round. That's because I've just been doing my my, um, my Christmas pod and that was all in rounds now I'm going to be doing 15 rows so I have some paper and a pencil here so I'm going to do 15 rows I've just done one okay so my basic rule of thumb was I did 15 chain I will do 15 rows I did 20 chain I did 20 rows that was how it worked. So it's quite simple as far as the maths are concerned. So one chain to turn. And I need to make sure I get right in there. Can you see it's right here? You have a temptation to jump there, but it's not. It's here. And again, still back loop. It's all back loop this. There is nothing else to do in it. There's no other stitch. So we're just going to do a back loop double crochet all the way along our which is actually 14 stitches now. It will be if I don't catch that. There we go. So you can play around with all sorts of size pumpkins, different yarns, double up, put a, a variegated yarn. Oh, you could do so many different things just following this simple system. Basically, we are just making a little rectangle of back loop double crochets that's all we're doing right i'm gonna to come towards the end now and this is where i want to point it out so can you see i'd be tempted to think oh that's last one because that's easy and then i missed that last one because i think it's not a stitch but it is but because it was the chain from the previous row it looks a bit dodgy so you sort of have to look try and find it it's there and if we miss that, you're going to lose your stitches. So there we go. So um, one chain. So we now have two rows. So I can go a little bit quicker now. I did an extra chain then, didn't I? We only need one turning chain. And turn. Make sure you get that first one. For ages, I got that wrong. It's just one of those things because it's so easy to miss. So it's just down to practice. Like I say, you'll know because either one end or both ends of your work, you'll start to lose stitches basically. So you'll create yourself a little triangle. And if that starts to happen, you know you're missing stitches. There's occasions now where I've made things and I've done that. I've missed the stitch. I'm like, oh. So I've just undone it because I've realised what I'd done when I've done this. And then it's a case of just keeping a sort of tight eye out for it. Because for some crochet stitches, it's not as easy to see. So you do have to watch that one. Again, because we're coming to the end. That first last one always looks a bit dodgy. In we go. 
and turning chains so that is three so you can see how it's making a ridge it's making a rib isn't it for want of a better word um it's quite a nice way of doing a rib this as well but usually if you're doing a rib like that say for a cuff then you'd be sort of working in that direction for the rest rather than this way but it does make a nice rib and it's quite a sharp one i think it's nice to have a nice sort of sharp rib i do like the one where you do with, with trebles which i do do quite often uh the front post back post one but i actually think this is easier a lot easier oh i'm doing it i'm saying easier and then i'm dropping stitches all the time aren't i so i will do all 15 rows with you um some of you might want to just pause and then find out how i actually put it together at the end that's by all means that's a great way of doing it if you're a little bit quicker than me or you're sort of wanting to sort of get on with it or if you're a little bit slower and you'd rather take time to do your stitches rather than trying to keep up that's fine whichever works for you if you're doing that i will see you in a minute or two at the other end because literally that is all it is a minute or two because we're already on our fifth which means we're already a third into making this little pumpkin I'm hoping my phone is going to manage here because um, I've just finished one of my other videos and it said battery low. So I just put it on charge for two seconds. Well, a bit more than two seconds. Well, I went and put the washing outside. Um, so I'm hoping it's charged enough. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pause again for this one. I should have charged my phone up fully to start with. That would have really helped. So I'm now on a row six, making sure I pick up that first one, not sort of leaning across it. As you get used to the stitch, you will get faster as well, says me. <laughs> you know, it's fatal if you go, oh, this is easy, or oh, this is quick, or this is this, and you're going to, you're going to go wrong. It's that thing when somebody's watching you, isn't it? If you do it yourself you nobody watching you think oh it's easy and somebody goes oh what are you doing oh they come and have a watch and you'll go wrong i can guarantee it and the last one don't forget to pick that last one up one chain turn that is six rows now we're on row number seven so as you can see, I'm so I am speeding up just very slightly now because I'm confident to where that back loop is and say, oh, hey, my wool, I just dropped off the other end of the table. It will be OK. It will be OK. Thankfully, I did hoover my floor uh, earlier, so it's not too bad. Sometimes with my craft floor, it's a nightmare, especially if I have beads and things out. There's bits of beads or... Yes, I dropped a needle the other day, which wasn't great because I dropped it inside my Crocs, didn't realise, put my shoes on and ouch. Yeah, that hurt. So you should always be aware of where your needles and pins are. It was actually a pin, not a needle. Right, so row number eight. So anyway, just saying the wool's on the floor, but my floor is clean because I cleaned it. I had to because there's always bits all over the place. So this is row number eight, I said, wasn't it? Yes, which means we are over, just over halfway. I'll have a little look at this rib when we get to that point. I mean, you can see it very obviously that the rib is forming. Can you see how nice that rib is? It's really, really good. I mean, obviously it stretches out when you do the pumpkin. I mean, you could, if you did more, rounds and just don't stuff it quite so tight you would get the rib closer together you can play about with that idea one chain turn and row number nine I have to decide if I'm doing, I know I said on my last video for crochet whether I'm going to do any Halloween-y things. I do have other Halloween videos on there. Uh, if you want to have a look, look under my playlists for my tutorials. I think that's probably one of the easiest ways of doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got to decide because time is clicking on, isn't it? So I do need to get either sort of autumnal sort of out of the way and uh, i've already started the christmas but again it needs to be done a little bit quicker 
because if you're making presents or if you're making for charity or anything like that you need a little bit of time so what am i on i'm on number 10 so i'm already two thirds of the way through i haven't got the faintest idea how long this takes because i can't see um the clock on my camera anyway because the clip i use to hold it uh, when i'm filming covers it over so it doesn't let me see what time it is so that is 10 rounds chain and turn don't forget that first stitch let me know in the comments if you do try it with different yarn um or sort of different quantities it would look really cute tiny i'm tempted to do that sort of for my doll's house but i do already have quite a few pumpkins that i've made previously if i do do that i would use a anchor number eight or a dmc uh, crochet cotton with something like a one millimeter crochet hook so it would be quite small it would be quite cute i might have to do that so that's 11 one chain and turn if you do want to see other types of pumpkins my amigurumi ones are on here as well i think what i'll do is you know when you put those little boxes at the end of the video um i think i'll put uh, yeah i'll pop one for the playlist i think that might be the easiest way so you can have a nosy if you're wanting to do anything sort of seasonal one chain turn so that is 12 we just have three more rows that wool's pulling a little bit that's why i had to pull it across the table then so we will do the little leaf and the tendril as well but i mean you wouldn't have to do those you could just do a little stalk it wouldn't really matter or you could do loads you could do loads of longer tendrils than i'm going to do you could really mix it up so i like to keep my crochet simple so you can actually play with it and make up whatever designs and make it more personal to yourself as well so that was 13 only two more to go so you can see as i say we're getting a little rectangle So this is row 14. It feels weird saying rows when I'm so used to saying rounds. So excuse me if I throw the odd round in when I'm speaking. Although I think I might do more like this. I'm sort of quite enjoying um, sort of working in a different direction for once. So I might have to think about using this method or this direction for a couple of other things. Right, so that's 14. Last one. One chain and turn. And off we go. Again, because it's all back loop. You'll know if you've not done the back loop because you won't get your ridge. Let me move a little bit nearer the middle of the camera there. I think as I start crocheting, sometimes I do pull my work towards my body, which is not helpful when I'm trying to film it because I have to sort of film it away from my body a little bit more. Right, last two stitches. One and two. Da -da! And that is it. That is our little shape that will turn into our pumpkin. So I want a bit of yarn here because I'm going to be using it for sort of gathering. So I do need a little bit of yarn from this. I'm just going to cut it there and the rest is going to fall off my table. <laughs> and I think what we'll do is before I put it together, we're going to finish all the crochet bits. So first of all, we need to, it's a rather long strand, I know, pull that through. And that's where we've got our little rib. Now for the actual stalk, wow, well that could not be any quicker. We're basically, you can, well you can make it as long as you want, but I'm just going to do six chain. One, two, three, four, five and six. And I'm just going to do one double crochet in each one. And that'll be it. It actually makes five stitches because obviously your six was your turning chain. But it's just one double crochet into every one of those chains. And that's it. We have a stalk. Doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. 
because at this size you can't really sort of do like the amigurumi type ones but yeah there's your little stalk all right so stalk done we're now going to move on to our little leaf and the tendril it's all in one for this one so slip knot on the hook now this is a little bit amigurumi-esque so we're going to do our two chain and then six double crochets into our first one one two three four five and six now what we're going to do next is we're going to do one double crochet into the first one so one double crochet into that first stitch yeah and then we're going to do two half trebles in the next one one two and then let me double count my numbers one two and three we're going to do two half trebles in the next three half trebles trebles could be longer stitches so that's two trebles in that one two trebles in that one then we're going to have a two half trebles in this one and we're going to have a double crochet and then we're going to have a slip stitch so you can see it's sort of bigger at this end than it is at the other end so it will look flatter it won't look like a circle as such now i'm not going to fasten off i'm literally going to go straight for the tendril now now it depends on how long you want this um i did 15 for this one i'm going to do just 12 for this one so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve and now all working back down that chain we're going to do three double crochets in each one and that is what will give us our curl it feels awkward to start with so that's three in the first one because it'll just curl up on itself which I say can be a little irritating that's three in that second one three in the third in the fourth my pussy cat's crying to come in fourth into the fifth well basically it's just three in every single one you don't even really need to count you see how it's all curly up curly up what's that about curling up even <laughs> I don't know, I'm ready for a cup of coffee today. I've been doing a few videos back to back um, because uh, my husband's off work next week. So it would be nice to sort of be able to do other things. I'll be pottering around or people will be in my way and I like to do a video when it's quiet. Last one. And three. Now I'm going to slip stitch back into our leaf. Now if you wanted to, you could do another chain or maybe a longer one and make another tendril also coming from there. But I'm actually going to fasten off. I'm not going to do any more at that point. So here we go. Fasten off. Make sure I've got the right piece. I have enough yarn to sew onto the pumpkin. And then, like I say, with the tendril, you just give it a little stretch. And you can see how it will hang now i have actually stitched it on here where the leaf was but i've also then pushed the yarn through and just stitched it here it just sort of holds it in place now let's look at how we actually construct i think we know how to sew these bits on that's not a problem but it's the actual construction of the pumpkin which is a little bit more unusual to what i normally do so i'm just threading my yarn up you have got a long piece here so it it does get in the way a little bit now you'll see both sides look identical really so you decide i'm just folding it over like this and all i'm doing is some little whip stitches which is basically like an over stitch picking it up all the way along so it just creates a little tube and then it's what we do with the tube after that so all the way i'm pulling it towards me again aren't i again i'll always do that for sewing because it's quite hard to sew at arm's length 
which is what I have to do for the video. This is a bit clumsy using a long string like this, so you do have to watch for it tangly. Oh! Two reasons for the pause then. Firstly, I knocked the camera flying, and secondly, I've led the pussycat in. So, I will try not to hit the camera again. Again, it's because I'm sort of sewing with such a long piece here. And there we go. So, I'm at the end there. Now, I know that bit's in the way, so I'm just going to do a knot. And I'm actually going to thread my yarn back along here. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to use that bit for the last bit. So, you know, she's meowed to come in and now she's going back out again. I swear she just doesn't like the door being shut. So I'm just running this along. It's not really going anywhere. It doesn't have to. Because it doesn't matter whether you turn this inside out or not, because it's still going to look the same. So I'm going to leave this as the right side facing. Don't do it like that. There we go. Now I'm going to just do a little knot here because I don't want it to pull when I do my gathering if that makes sense. So basically, I'm just going to gather up around here and it's just literally in and out, in and out, as near to the top as you can get. So it's just in, out, in, out, in, out, it's just a little gathering stitch problem when you have a long strand it can catch as well in out in out i'm nearly round to where i started in out in out right so i'm back to where i started now so you can see it's already started gathering around my fingers so all i'm going to do now is gather tight okay now it looks a bit weird at this point but we need to sort of just fasten off so it's not going to go anywhere it needs to stay tightly closed one knot and a little knot it is not going anywhere so it's up to you at this point now i did earlier when i did my first one turn it inside out then so it looks a little bit neater but it just depends on what this looks like you can actually just sort of push it in a bit to make it neater but we will be turning it inside out now i don't need this bit of yarn because there's already a bit of yarn at the bottom that's why i shuffled this along so i'm just going to sew the ends in a bit it's going to be on the inside so it won't matter too much let's just snip it off and get rid of that bit let's turn it inside out now so this is going to be the top so you can see it makes it a lot neater and we'll we can stuff it now i think we can stuff it you could start gathering but basically i'm going to stuff the pumpkin now till i feel it's where I want it so you can see you've got a little shape there because this is all going to gather in in a second so imagine how you want it a little bit more stuffing I think if you put too much stuffing in it will start to separate your stitches especially if you've used a loose hook and you'll start to see your stuffing coming through and you don't want to see that so I think that's okay so the end that I'd left this is why it's always good to leave long ends otherwise you've got to reset up another piece of yarn which you could do as well it wouldn't matter and i'm just going to do exactly what i did with the other one keep it really to the top because this time it is going to show because it's not going to be on the inside it's going to be on your outside but this is the bottom of our pumpkin last bit and pull it tight we need to do a little knot while it's nice and tight so we don't lose it okay and um, what i'm actually going to do now is i'm going to push my my needle all the way through to the top and it pulls its bottom in a little bit you see and it's so that helps it sit wherever you're putting it and then i'm going to just tie it off at the top and push it back through a couple of times and we can snip it off 
and that's it we've made a little pumpkin how easy was that one so there's our little pumpkin the bottom is the bit that pulls in because i say it may, helps it sit flat so now it's a case of taking our little tendril and leaf i would sew in the one end and just use the remaining one to actually do it and that's going to stitch into place there and then we will stitch a little stalking you don't have to if you want don't want to but basically that is the effect that we get so that's our little tiny pumpkin it has actually come out a little bit larger hasn't it this time i think it's because i put a bit more stuffing in to be honest so i now have a little collection that will be sitting on my side ready for some autumn vibes we want some summer vibes first but it's not that long before autumn so i hope you enjoyed doing that really could not be any simpler to make could it um if you do want to sort of see my other videos i'll put the links on if you do enjoy my videos please like subscribe and share etc i'm just turning around for something don't know whether some of you actually already seen the book as well if you do get the book i do have to comment there is one error in it on the pig which my poor piggy doesn't have a head somehow it has got mi missed off when it's gone to print but you can get a sort of if you go on the video for this there's a little link takes you to the publishers and you can get sort of your i think it's called an errata i think that's how it's pronounced that's how they wrote it anyway um so you can get that and it will show you sort of the errors on there well they're not the errors the replacement for the errors should i say so there is that as well so i'm going to leave it at that hope you enjoyed it and i will see you all very soon and bye bye for now